What's up world? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the render pipeline state and what the heck that means in relation to metal. We will be discussing render command encoders, command buffers, command queues, vertex shaders, fragment shaders, libraries, render pipeline descriptors, clear colors. Oh man, I can't I can't even keep I can't keep going. That was that's kind of a lot of stuff we have to discuss. So let's go. All right, so we're gonna start with just a simple fix of an error that I forgot to point out last time. We created a views controller uh, and we didn't clear it out from the class. So if you go to the main storyboard, click on views controller, that'll select our views controller and then go over here, select that button and just delete views controller. Done, press enter and our error goes away, right? Well, it doesn't go away yet. It'll be when we build it next. But for now, moving on, errors are fixed we need to create our backend code for this view. Since we have a view, which is an NS view for now, uh, we need to make the code, the, the backend code that draws to this screen. The most simple way to do that is go over here to game engine, go to new file, Coco class, next. Okay, so it was an NS view, but we need an MTK view. MTK view is a subclass of NS view, so it contains all of the NS view properties, but it also has metal view properties as well, uh, which we'll come into in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna call this game view. Set subclass of MTK view, language Swift, moving on. So now that we have this backend set up, that's awesome, but we have this error. Uh, go ahead and just delete these, the, the top section and just type import metal kit. Now that error should just go away and everybody's happy. The next thing we need to do is create our initializer. For the MTK view, it's going to need the coder initializer, but we'll go into that maybe in the future. We don't need to know what that means right now. So go ahead and initialize that. So now that that's set up, which is pretty awesome as we have our initializer for our game view, uh, let's go into the main storyboard. First, I'm gonna drag this up here so it's you know organized. Go to the main storyboard, click on view, and let's connect our new game view to this view. So go to the class over here, just type the game view, and that will connect up really nicely. So this view will display anything that this game view wants to sh display. So go back there. Let's go ahead and create the draw function. The draw function is built into the NS view. Um, and so it's also a part of the MTK view. In the later episodes, we're gonna use a view delegate. That's not important now, but for now, we're just going to keep this in the MTK view. The next thing we're gonna need to do is instantiate a couple properties that the MTK view has. Like I said, the NS view was a good, is a good display unit for the, uh, for our storyboard, but we need MTK view. MTK view has a couple properties. And one of those properties is the device. The device is the abstract representation of our GPU. That means that we can use it to create metal GPU objects and send those down to the GPU. So let's go ahead and instantiate that now. So now that we have our device, we can create things, right? Uh, the next thing we're gonna need to do is put our clear color. What is our clear color? Our draw function is going to be calling 60 frames per second, hopefully at best, uh, 60 frames per second, which means it will be clearing, drawing, clearing, drawing, clearing, drawing, clearing, you get it, over and over and over again. And we need to set what clear color is covering the last image that was showing. So to do that, we just set the clear color like so. So I selected somewhat of a green color. I'm actually not sure what that is, but it's a green color. I know that because there's more green in it than anything. It's from a, it's a, it's in a, a zero to one uh, as a color. So usually it's like zero to 255 if you're using like a hexadecimal type number, but we're using just zero to one, simple. Keep that, keep that in your mind. We'll fix that later and make it a little easier to write clear colors. For now, we need to move on. Next thing we need to do is to set the, what do we need to set? Oh, the pixel format. The pixel format's pretty important. Uh, we set the pixel format just like so. Okay, so when we set the color pixel format, 
it needs to match the output of our fragment shader. And hopefully you'll understand that in a second when we go into fragment shader, but the fragment shader will output some sort of a displayed image, an image, and we need to match that image pixel format to our backend pixel format. So that's what we're doing right there. The BGRA 8 Unorm is the most common one that you use with basic applications. So we're gonna use that now. Maybe we'll get into some more complex ones in the future. But pro tip, if you click color pixel format right here, go over here to this little quick help section and click pixel format, you'll see it brings up all of these different pixel formats that exist and what they mean and the sizes of them and all sorts of goodies. So. Keep that in mind if you really wanted to dive a little deeper into that. You can do that for any one of these properties, by the way. Um, the next thing we're gonna need is the command queue. Now, the command queue is a little tricky to de describe without showing you exactly what it does, but basically all it is is it's just a queue. Picture yourself going to Disneyland and waiting in line. You're waiting in a queue where the last person to enter the line is the last out. So the first in, first out, so FIFO, right? So basically the command queue acts as a limiter of who goes out at what time and so it's populated with command buffers and then once it's ready to commit that command buffer it will push it to our clear screen and then once it's the buffers pushed to the clear screen it will be discarded so watch this slick little animation so you see we have these command buffers going in and really they could be processing or committing or whatever right now, but we have all these command buffers going in. Now, one of the command buffers is about to go through the commit stage. And what will happen is it will be committed to the clear screen. It will be shown, it will display it to the drawable. And then once it's done displaying it for that one 60th of a second, it will then discard that buffer and that buffer is no more. Uh, it's gone, it's finito, it's disposed of. And then it continues on through the whole entire cycle again and again and again. All right, so now that there's a little definition of what a command queue is, let's instantiate it. So let's go to the top up here and just type that, and we will instantiate it down here like so. So now that we have our command queue, we need stuff to store inside of it. So what I wanna do next is just jump inside of our draw function and we'll create things as we go. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is grab our drawable and our render pass descriptor. So the way the draw function works, uh, we're gonna try to grab the drawable and the render pass descriptor. If we can't draw those, we're using a guard right here. We'll just return. Looks like GameView has no member drawable, which it's, uh, it's uh, this is current drawable. That's better. Uh, so yeah, once it tries to grab, grab the current drawable and the current render pass, if it can, then it will continue on. What's next? We need to create some command buffers to store inside of our command queue. What is a command buffer? Okay, so a command buffer is pretty much just objects we are pushing into the command queue for execution. We can guarantee that whichever order we enqueue the command buffer into the command queue, it will execute first. If we push command buffer one in or command buffer two in, like they're gonna all be executed in that exact same order. Now, say we have a command buffer with a compute function. Well, we'll push that command buffer into the compute function. It will in our example, pass a reference to a texture, it will update the texture in another command buffer, and then that other command buffer will then get pushed through out into the clear screen and then be disposed of. All right, so in order to instantiate our command buffer, we just type this. And now we've used our command queue to make our command buffer, and we can pop as many of those as we need. <laughs> as many as we need into our command queue before we commit it. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is our render command encoder. Man, what is a render command encoder? So a command encoder is pretty much just telling our command buffer what to do when it is committed. There are four different types of things that it can do when it's committed. Uh, the first one being just being a render command encoder. That means it's going to render the graphics directly to the screen. It's not gonna be doing any computational thing like that, uh, except what's on its basic vertex and fragment shader, but that's it, it's, it's built to render graphics. Uh, the second command encoder is going to be a compute command encoder, which is primarily just doing computational tasks and uh, mathematics and just things that you wanna multi-thread 
over the GPU. Uh, the fourth type is going to be Blick Command Encoder, which will be memory management tasks. And then our third one, or our fourth one, will be uh, multiple graphics rendering tasks. So the ability to render multiple things at the exact same time. And that doesn't necessarily even mean to the screen. It means that if you wanted to render some sort of a texture, at the same time as running to another texture and then you render those two textures to the screen with a render command encoder. I know that's kind of confusing, but as we dive later on into this series, we'll get into these a little bit more. Also in our previous example, we had our two command buffers. So command buffer one might compute texture information to be used on a model. And then command buffer two would then once that one was committed and executed successfully, we use the texture created in command buffer one to render to the screen. Uh, so the command buffer one would use the compute command encoder to do like computational texture modifications. And then command buffer two would be the render command encoder to display to the screen. Sweet, let's instantiate it. You can do that with the command buffer, like so. You see, we used our render pass descriptor to instantiate our render command encoder. And that's because our uh, render pass descriptor has a lot of uh, pixel information, buffer storage information for our view um, for the next drawable. Uh, once we have our render command encoder created, we can now set the render command encoders render pipeline state. So the render pipeline state is probably the most important thing to understand in this entire series. <laughs> Pretty, it, it, It's kind of the pivotal aspect of rendering. Uh, that's because it holds so much information. It contains our vertex function, our fragment function, and our color attachments in this example, but there's a lot more to understand and we'll go over a lot of that in the future. But for now, let's focus on the small things. So you'll see our render pipeline state contains a render pipeline descriptor. Inside of our render pipeline descriptor, we have the color attachment, vertex function, and fragment function. One thing to note about the color attachment is the pixel format. The pixel format of the color attachment at zero, uh, which is the rendering color attachment, needs to match our NSView's pixel format. So earlier we set it to .bgra8unorm, and so we'll need to set this color attachment to that exact same pixel format in order for it to render correctly, or it, in, it will throw an error if we do not. Uh, so there's also the vertex function and the fragment function, which are created with the MTL library. So the MTL library makes the MTL function, makes the MTL fragment shaders, and then stores them in the render pipeline descriptor. The vertex shader and the fragment shader both live on a metal file, which I'll go over in the example coming up right now. In order to do that, we're going to need to go up back up to the top here and make a function called create render pipeline state. Once we have a create render pipeline state, let's go ahead and create that function and do exactly what that function title says. We're going to create the render pipeline state up at the top. We're just going to store that here for now. We're not going to do this in the future, but for now, I think it's a good place to put it. So let's put it there. Now we need to instantiate it. How do we instantiate it? Go back down to our create render pipeline state and we're gonna need a couple things. One, MTL library. Now that we have our library, we can create our vertex functions. Right now, we don't have any shaders created, but what we can do is we can kind of get the code, put it on here for, for now. So let's instantiate a vertex shader and a, well, a vertex function and a fragment function. Okay, so we have a vertex function and we have a fragment function. Now we can make a MTL render pipeline descriptor, render pipeline state descriptor. And that is your basic render pipeline descriptor. Next thing we're gonna need to do is probably jump into some shader stuff now it won't be any complicated shaders this won't even return a shape that nothing's going to display but a clear color let's go ahead and create that let's go to game engine we're going to create a new file a metal file next we're going to call it my shaders because we're not original people we're over that don't worry about it i'm going to get rid of all that stuff at the top 
and I'm just gonna create the two most basic functions you can ever imagine real quick. Watch this. All right, there they are. These things are, they don't do anything. We don't pass any parameters. We don't, this is not using the GPU. Right now, we're just trying to set up some shaders so that we can clear the screen to a different color and have metal working. So we will be able to draw in the next episode. So let's move back into the game view. I'm gonna drag shaders up real quick. Let's go into the game view and see what we need to update. So you see right here, we have vertex function. Well, this vertex function, this fragment function are directly correspond to my shaders.metals vertex function fragment function but it doesn't know which ones we're using so the best way to do this um, is we need to set our vertex function name to the same name on the metal file so go ahead and go back to the metal file copy that go back to the game view paste it right there do the same thing for the fragment shader and then we should have them linked uh, one thing to note is this name has to be exactly the same as on my shaders.metal. So when it does its compiling, it'll go through the metal files, find out which ones have this title, and then it will use those. So moving on, what's next? Well, the next thing we need to do is create the render pipeline state. How do we do that? Just do it. Watch. Okay, so now we have everything kind of set up for the render pipeline state. We can now start using that in our draw call. So go down here to the draw function and let's set the render command encoders render pipeline state. Okay, so now that the render pipeline state is set on the render command encoder, we can send buffer information like our vertex, our, ver our vertice position, color, normals, all that stuff, model constants, scene constants, but we don't need to do that in this episode because this is just clear in the screen, like I said. Uh, so right here, I'm just gonna put a comment that says, uh, send info to render command encoder. That's it. Uh, next, we're gonna need to stop the render command encoding. So do that by calling end encoding. Okay, now that we've ended the encoding, we need to present our drawable, the next drawable to the screen. So it's gonna present the drawable. Once that drawable's done, it's going to need to be committed. So let's commit it. And there you have it. We have set up our render pipeline state. I think that if we were to run it right now, we're gonna clear this screen to a beautiful green color. And I love green. You bet your sweet donkey self, I love green. Whoa, let's run it. Oh yeah, now that is a very lime green. <laughs> Whatever, I'm keeping it, I think it's beautiful. Uh, that's it. That's all I really wanted to show you. We, we just needed to get this render pipeline stage set up. I hope you like this episode because really I had no other way of doing this. I wanted to kind of speed it up. I don't plan on doing these little short cuts every single episode. It's just there was kind of a lot of information to cover in this first one and I wanted to do it in sort of an easy way for you to follow along. So I hope you liked it. See you next time.